Welcome one and all, I am Technivorous here to remind you, make sure you reduce your Z offset on that subscribe button down there and give the notification bell a good first layer squish. That way you can get notified every time we put up a new 3D printing and tech video. That being said, today's video is brought to you by Weeble. Check the description down below for a link that will help you get 12 free stocks when you sign up and fund your account with Weeble today. And without any further ado, we are here in Fusion 360. Today we are going to be showing you how to make your own 3D model that you can print. Now, as we do with the Blender series, we're going to be doing a whole series on these. So make sure if you're interested in learning Fusion 360 for making 3D models that you stick around. This is my preferred program for making models because it's very accurate and easy to work with. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. Today's model is going to be super simple. I'm going to show you how to do a few things and give you a couple of recommendations. And all you really need to know is at the end of this, you'll be able to print a simple test calibration cube. That is a defined height on all three axes, which means you can test if your printer is printing accurately using this cube. So if you're not familiar with a calibration cube, it is exactly what it sounds like. And in order to make ours, we are going to need to make a sketch and I will show you how to do that in just a minute. But before I start sketching up any of my models, I do like to add some parameters because they're very, very helpful for altering your model later. So what we're gonna do is click on modify here and we're gonna go down to change parameters. Now, if you look in here, you have user parameters and model parameters. So we're gonna add a user parameter and we're gonna call this one width. We're not gonna use an expression and we don't need to enter a value. Well, it is, we are just going to do, I guess we can't enter the value, so we'll enter an expression. So we'll just do 20, which gives us a value of 20. You can perform maths in here. Say I want to do 20 times 3. Okay. And then once you have one parameter, I'll show you in a second how you can use it to alter other ones. So let's take that. And we are going to go ahead and add another user parameter called height. This one, again, is going to be 20 millimeters. And in fact, we're going to go in and we're going to add our third one here. This one is going to be, we have width, we have height, and now we need depth. So let's grab depth. We'll type that in. And we can actually set it equal to one of the other parameters we've already established, OK? So this one equals whatever this one is. And let's go ahead and see if we can, let's see, expression. Um, this will equal width two. All right, so now they're all set to 20. So watch this, this is set to 20. If I go to 25 and hit enter, it changes all of them to be 25. That's why this is very, very handy because some dimensions are gonna rely on others. Now, don't need to worry about this too much. Let's go in here, change this back to 20 because that's pretty standard for a calibration cube. And actually, if we're being serious about it, since the cube is the same in all three dimensions, we really only need the one value. We could put the width value in for all three dimensions and it would work just fine. So uh, in order to let you know exactly what I'm acting on here, I did this separately so you could kind of see how the parameters interact. So now that you have your dimensions, which you don't strictly need, keep in mind you can do this all without those parameters. So I can go to create, create sketch and I'm gonna pick the bottom surface here and we're gonna go up in here and these are our sketching items here for drawing different shapes we're gonna go ahead and do a super simple rectangle and we're gonna click center rectangle that way it starts in the middle of our sketch plane here so we're gonna type in 20 and 20 now this is how you do it if you don't have parameters we do however have our parameters so we're just gonna type in width And we're going to type in depth. Then we 
should have this side over here that says sketch palette. You click finish sketch here and it leaves the sketch open but we are not able to edit it anymore. What we can do though is hit extrude here and select this face and what we're going to do there is we're going to type in height and we're going to select it. Okay, So now we have the simple shape of our cube. Now you can export this and print it but first I think maybe we should put the axis on it for identifying which side is which so we're gonna go up to this face here we're gonna click create we're gonna click create sketch and this is our top so this will be Z so all we need to do is go to create and then text put our box about here and then we're going to type in our text and on this axis it's going to be Z. Size is about right. Go ahead and close that out. We're going to move it to the middle of the cube here. As close as we can get it. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to open this, make sure the sketch palette's open and hit finish sketch. Now we're going to extrude in the other direction. So let's grab this face. Hit the extrude button and we're gonna say negative one. You'll see that it cuts into the object and that's denoted by the red that you see and it's saying operation cut. Now we can go and we can do operation join you're not gonna see anything because it's at that level and everything that it's adding is basically already built out as models. So we're gonna go to cut we're gonna hit OK you can see it's now added that in. Now looking at the front of our model The front face here is going to be the z, the y direction. Excuse me. So we need to do the same thing here. So create, create sketch, and create text. It's already set to the same size because we didn't alter our size, so it's set at 10 millimeters. We're going to change the text to say Y. We're going to hit OK. And we're going to get that centered up as good as we can. And we're going to do the same things. Open the sketch palette, finish sketch. We're going to extrude this negative 1. There you go. Next we're going to do the X and you can place it on either side here. We're going to go with the left side. And it's important to remember when you place this cube on the build plate, you're going to want the Y facing out or facing the front of the printer. And then measuring this side to the opposing side will give you any variation from the bed or the Y axis. So here we're going to do our X. We're going to go ahead and click create sketch one more time. We're almost done with this simple little model and I will show you how to export it and you can make sure you hit that subscribe button because in the next video we're going to be doing something a little bit more complicated learning a couple more tricks and eventually we're going to get up to doing moving parts and really complicated mechanisms. We just uh, need to work our way up there so we don't overwhelm you. So alright so we have our X finish sketch extrude minus one and there we go here's our cube so pretty decent uh, cool thing about fusion 360 is it lets you go into render mode you can check it out in there right now there's nothing appearance wise put on the cube so I'm getting a very very simple material um, but we'll get into materials more a little bit later you can actually go in here and select one and then change the appearance. There are a bunch of pre-made materials already that you can... Ooh, I locked it up. There we go. Uh, there's some pre-made materials in here already. Right now it's using this metallic, but we can go and let's get plastic since that's what we usually print with. We'll try this. Okay, so now you see it rendered in beige. And when we actually go back to the design you can see it's changed color as well. So this is a good way of keeping track of different parts. Right now it's not necessary, but will be later. So make sure you keep that tip in mind. So right now we're going to right click 
on this body and we are going to click save mesh this is how you get your STL exported okay so the selection this one item and we are going to put out a binary STL our units are in millimeters we don't need to preview the mesh so we are just going to go ahead and hit OK. You can actually send it directly to a 3D print utility here and open it in Kira. So let's do that. I have Kira set up. Let's hit OK. It's going to export the file and it's going to open Kira up and open the file in Kira for me. And I see I need to go in and update which version of Kira I'm using. It is loading the Arachne beta which is an older version. Uh, however, it will work to display the model. You might not have the option to open it directly in Kira if you haven't added Kira to your external programs in Fusion 360. That's a whole other video, but just so you know, you can then save that file to anywhere, just as I did, and then open it up in Kira normally. So don't worry if you don't have that option. It is still saving to whatever location you happen to choose and here we are now don't worry about the fact that this is in a odd place on the build plate that's simply this version of Kira uh, like I said it's a little bit dated I need to update that uh, we can drag it in the middle of the build plate and to make sure like I said um, so the y-axis is actually this way because it is measured by the bed the x-axis is your gantry measured this way then the z-axis is your height and the lead screw for that is usually on the back of your printer and it's going to measure this way so your vertical accuracy so what you want to do is get this guy printed out in the orientation it's in now the Y to the front of the bed the X to the side and the Z up and you can use whatever filament or settings you want and then you're gonna go ahead and get some calipers and measure your model now if your model is off there are things you can do in order to make your printer more accurate However, that is not a model making video, so I highly encourage you to print this, check it out, see if there's a difference between the 20 millimeters it should be and what your printer is giving you, and look into some calibration of the printer to get your settings dialed in, because we're going to be using Fusion 360 to make, as I said, some pretty complicated and intricate models, and in order to do that, you need to have your tolerances defined to a specific point. So basically, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. But anything within about 0.3 or 0.2 will be accurate enough to do what we need to do. So let's go ahead and wrap this up, guys. As I said, check out my Webull link. We check out my Webull link down below. You can get yourself up to 12 free stocks. That deal is almost over. It ends this month, so definitely sign up. You don't actually have to deposit any money to get free stock, so it is a great deal for both of us. And when you sign up. I get some free stock too. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Make sure that you have hit that notification bell because there's lots more how to make a model with Fusion 360 videos coming, and they're coming from the Technivorous channel.